you are super perfect human and you never get down and upset and frustrated. But then it's that one thing that can come in that space between our thoughts and bring us some peace. Sometimes it's seeing a grandchild that can bring some peace. Sometimes it can be changing the words of a song from because he lives to because she lives. It can bring some peace. So this morning, yes, God can walk with us. So, with that being said, we want to see if we can peel Vicky from behind the big board to come this morning and bless us with some announcements as our team plays us some music this morning. Something slow and low this morning. How's everybody feeling this morning? Good. Amen. Amen. Let's, 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 uh, let's clap and bring her up and say congrats. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see everybody again. I just love these in person worships. I'm talking a little bit closer to my hand. Okay. Anyway, we have a few announcements this week. We have Liblets on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And it's going to be virtual and in person. I know they're meeting at Kate's house if they want to be in person. I think they're doing some way. Well, bring your own. Oh, bring your own. Okay, drink some dessert, so bring your own snacks for dinner. And I know it's going to be great. Uh, the name of the book is yeah, Hamnet. Hamnet. So, um, also, if you're interested in Litwitz, please give Sue a call. She's the one that kind of organizes the group, and they would love to have you. And then on Wednesday, we also have our normal weekly gathering, and that's at 7 o'clock, and that is always virtual, at least right now. Um, so we'd love to have you join in. We'd love to have everybody's opinions and thoughts and everything. So, and then we have some people we want to pray for. We want to pray for Olive and Cheryl, Bud, Donna, Lars, Kevin, Mary, uh, the Herbert Lafour family um, with their recent loss. Thank you. 
the back for the first one. So uh, she's back home now and hanging in there. Okay, so we still want to keep Jamie in our prayers that she can make it through this chemo and that she will make it through this chemo and just keep her strong. And I thought one thing. Oh, and our mission this month is the NAM Pediatric Clinic. So it's the North, Northwest Assistant Ministries. And they need a lot of help. They've suffered a lot during this time of COVID and everything. So they need some extra funds and everything. So you can either mail a check directly to them or to us or pay through time. So I think that's it. I think we have a good group here. We're going to have some great music. And so let's set our hearts and minds for worship. that's been filled here today for each mind and heart that fills the presence of this tent we thank you only you truly know what we are setting out to accomplish today we have an idea a vision tent and daily instruction we have talents abilities and time to work however only you can see in perfect detail the end of every beginning, every project, every season, every life. Nothing is ever in vain. Even our mistakes and missteps are used for good. Your righteousness transcends all our efforts and understanding. Forgive us for our pride, the pride that puffs us up and the pride that threatens to unqualify us. Strengthen our confidence in who you made us to be. Set us free from comparison in order to work together efficiently. Bless this service today, all those present, as well as the lives of those we will encounter afterwards. Ready us to make every moment count. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. This morning, our scripture reading is Psalm 133, 1 through 3. How wonderful, how beautiful, when brothers and sisters get along. It's like costly anointing oil flowing down the head and beard, flowing down Aaron's beard, flowing down the collar of his priestly robe. It's like the dew on Mount Hermon, flowing down the slopes of Zion. Yes, that's where God commands the blessing and ordains eternal life. I guess we could roll on into our children's moment. We don't have any children here present, but maybe the children out there in virtual land We'll get to hear this. Our lesson this morning is about a clean heart. Does everybody know what this is? I bet just about everybody knows what a bar of soap is, don't you? In fact, I'm sure most of you get a good workout with a bar of soap every day. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Do you know what would happen if there was no soap? A little bit of dirt would get on you today, and it would add to the dirt the next day, and pretty soon you'd be a filthy mess. In fact, some of you could probably get it all done in a few minutes. <laughs> That's why it's so important to use soap to get clean, because you look better, you smell better, and you feel healthier. Too much dirt can make you sick. Did you know that people can get dirty on the inside too? That's what God's Word calls sin. When we do things we shouldn't, 
or don't do things we're supposed to do, we need some way to be cleaned inside. No bar soap can do that. That's what Jesus does for us. When we give our lives to him and let him come to live inside us, he cleans us inside so that we're as clean as new. Our children's Bible verse today is John 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9. And it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And our closing prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for being willing to come into our lives and make them clean. Help us to live for you so that we can stay clean. And everybody said, Amen. <clears throat> We've come to the time in our service for the centering moment of pastoral prayer and then the Lord's Prayer. Why do we do a centering time? in this faith community, in this spiritual organization. Somewhere I read that the human mind has anywhere between 50 to 60,000 thoughts a day. So what? Some argue it has 12 to 15,000. But it doesn't matter what you look at, that's a lot of thoughts. And sometimes those thoughts can be from the past, weighing us down, Sometimes those thoughts can be about the future, giving us anxiety. And more often than not, people will come into the house of God with all that baggage with them. And sometimes in the church, they'll just roll on and go through the announcements and go through this, go through that, and, and never take time to connect. There are some people that come into the house of God that have just lost a loved one. It could be last week, it could be last year, it could be 26 years ago. And they walk in with all of this stuff on them and sometimes nobody says hello to them. Or sometimes they don't shake their hand pre COVID or whatever. Sometimes they just let them sit in the chair by themselves and don't even say anything to them. They leave out of the church the same way they did when they came. So we need a time to just let go. If it's just for five seconds. We need a time to say, Lord, thank you for all of your blessings and your benefits. Forgive us for carrying all that heavy load from yesterday and from last year into today. I know you told us to cast our cares upon you. I know you told us to take our, your yoke upon us for your burden is easy. So as long as I am blessed to be in this capacity with you, I will always take time to make time to slow down and to connect eyeball to eyeball, face to face. You know, sometimes in churches, folks don't even look at each other anymore. They look at the big screen. Show how much money we got in the church. We got humongous screens. But what about this interpersonal thing? This kind of stuff that Jesus did. Remember, he reclined at the table, hung out with some folk, even the ones that were trying to kill him. Even that boy who cut that boy's ear off. Old Malthus. Put it back on, freaked him out, went on the couch. Can we take time? So this morning, if you would, read in with me. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Eternal and ever living God. We slow down this morning. As we sit in this tent in your space, 
as we sit under and with your creation. It doesn't take us long to look around and see you. Not only at what's around us, but at each other. And Lord, we thank you for that blessing this morning. Thank you for your safety bringing us here together. Thank you for those who are watching this morning. I don't know what challenges the people are facing this morning that are watching us. I don't know what challenges for those under the sound of my voice. But I know from experience that as long as we have a steady faith, yes, we will have some difficult days. But as long as we have our hand firmly attached to yours, we will be able to overcome what lies ahead. Allow us to remember that when we face the hills and the valleys. Bless each person. Bless our young adults this morning. Be with us, guide and keep us. And may we be the church even when we leave this place today. Somebody out there needs a smile. Somebody out there needs to know that behind that mask is someone that actually cares. Sometimes we got to listen to people that need to vent. We may be their only solace to find freedom. Thank you, Lord God. For those that woke up this morning with a pain, both spiritual, physical, or mental, we pray for you to be their healing Lord. Remind them. You know, we pray for the family of Reverend Royster's grandbaby. Thank you for putting his name on my mind this morning. No child should have to suffer. We pray for him this morning. We pray for all that are sick and that are shut in. Be with him. God. Lord, we thank you for not only this time of prayer, but we thank you for the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. The Lord's prayer. <coughs> Let us all say together. Our Father, our Father, our Lord, 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 Vicky, I got the car up. I forgot we got to talk about some money. I'm sorry. I was done. I was, we got to raise some money. But anyway, now is the time that we can also get a blessing through the process of giving. And as Vicky said earlier, she already explained our April mission this month. And she also talked about tithely. So if you want to give now or be able to give through tithely uh, this afternoon or tomorrow, then you have that option as well. So it's not only just giving time. It is... Blessing time. So I stole that from one of my African brothers that used to be a part of our CME church in Africa. And the bishop came back and said, no, they don't say it's offering time. They say it is blessing time. Because I remember a time we didn't have time, nothing to be able to bless anyone with. So now if we have a dollar over broke, I'm giving it to somebody because I know what it's like not to have. So this morning, are we going to pass the basket or are we going to? Ooh, we got a big old basket. We'll try to fill that up, please.
the gifts of those who gave this morning. Thank you for those that desire to give but were unable to at this time. We ask that the windows of heaven for them would open up and pour out blessings upon them. Lord, thank you and that this money be used not only for sustaining of open arms, but to bless other people beyond this tent so that they know that we're not just a church that meets and talks together, but we're about blessing other people as well. So Lord, thank you, thank you, and thank you.
to get things adjusted, see how this works. Everybody excited for this? Come on. Amen.
at all this morning maybe a little bit but they were able to come together can't you see how this thing is coming together yes now imagine if we were sitting in a sanctuary which we are but we're sitting in a sanctuary and they are and they are playing and you are standing on your feet because you've had a hard week and something about that song that says you are free struck a chord with you and you have the freedom to stand up in the house of God and pat your hands. Nobody is going to look at you as if you are off your medication. <laughs> Nobody is going to look at you and go in the parking lot and have another meeting about you. <laughs> because I'm, I'm going, going to be standing, standing right, right there with, with you, clapping my hands, hands as well. well. Amen. Because, because I, believe I believe that, that you should be able to, to praise, praise God the way that you choose, choose to praise God. God. For some of us, we sit and we just reflect. Some raise our hands. Some pat our feet. Some just sit there and we might snap our fingers. But no matter how you do it, you're telling God, thank you for what you have done for me this week. Thank you for opening doors that some people said would never be opened. Thank you for a prognosis that was worse, that's better than the diagnosis. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your courage. And thank you for everything that you've done which allows me to walk with my head high, my back straight. Thank you. So welcome to Open Arms United, Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. No matter what you are, no matter where you are, you're welcome here. And when we're able to shake hands as freely as we can, I'll be at the front door shaking hands, dapping up people. You know what dapping, right? Dapping, it's all this fancy stuff that we do. Some people do that. No matter what you, where you are, where you're from, they'll walk in, oh, hey, where up? and do all this kind of stuff, and you just that with them. Hey, how you doing? Some want to shake your hand. Some just want to look at you and say, whew. No matter where you are, who you are on life's journey, you are welcome at Open Arms United Church of Christ. This morning we will begin by looking at Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 5, and then Acts chapter 1, one verse 14. Verse. Then I'll skip over and read Acts chapter 4. Verse 32 to 35, you can continue playing, Nia. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 5 begins this way. It says, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 14 begins this way, it says, These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brothers. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 through 35. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundant grace was upon them all. For there was not a needy person among them. For all who were owners of land and houses would sell and bring the proceeds of the sales, lastly, and lay them at the apostles' feet and they would be distributed to each as any had need. We want to talk very briefly this morning from the thought, united we stand. United we stand. I have a terrible report this morning that you already know that I'm not going to blow your mind is that 
We live in a fractured world. Amen. News break. A world marred with fractured political systems, family systems, educational systems, and systems that keep dividing people against other people. Now it's making us with fear, and I'm fearing you, and you're fearing me, and I'm compartmentalizing, and all of these things. So now that if you come in here and you sneeze, I look at you like you tried to kill me. I can't tell if you're smiling behind your mask anymore. I can't see love in your smile. I, I can't see your face light up when you see me anymore. So now it's like it's faceless people just walking down the street compartmentalized and fractured and, and broken. Fueling the breakdown of the American system. In a fractured society, people are left feeling alone, desperate, and in pain. Just like a fractured bone, of which I broke two of them, it hurts. And it produces excruciating pain so does living in an America where the haves look down on the have-nots and the strong prey on the weak. It has been said that the world needs love. But where can we find love in a world where even the young are preyed upon and the elderly are treated like refuse? Where can we find acceptance and freedom from the ills of America, where can we find these words which Emma Lazarus, a Jewish American poet, wrote, and it rings true in the house of God. It says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Now, I've never seen that written, but I know it's there. But there's another golden door I know about that all people should be welcome to enter into and feel freedom when they come inside. This golden door should lead into the house of God. In the house of God, one should be able to find healing. Brought on by living in a fractured world, one should be able to find wholeness in a place designed for the broken and the weary. This divisive world is not what the Christ meant when he breathed his church into existence. I was thinking about it. What do I preach after resurrection? Holy Week. Holy Week had us running all over the place and making banners and making sure the placement's right and making sure my clothes are okay because we're on TV, making sure I had no food in my beard, making sure everything was right, making sure all the Hebrew and the Greek had been, ex all this, we had to do it. It was a long week. Then he walks in and he goes through this uh, unlawful uh, trial and execution and, and miraculous Resurrection, and then we come down. How do you come down from that? How do you now sit in Jerusalem as 120 people that are ostracized now? Because we all got up, most of us who are still working, got up Monday morning and, and wiped the sleep from our eyes and, and washed our face and brushed our teeth and whatever we did. Gay encouraged us to take a bath and all this kind of stuff. So now I got to bathe on every day now instead of just on Saturday. So all of this stuff. Thank you, Gay. I had a plan, but you messed it up. <laughs> So we jumped up on Sunday morning and those who are retired kind of rolled over and stretched a little bit and say, what am I going to do today? But those in Jerusalem didn't have it that way that then. But that was something they had to do. The early church had its problems. We know that. But after the resurrection and being viewed as outcasts, it did three things. After the drama and the trauma of what they went through. Number one, they were united in purpose. They were united in prayer, and they were united in power. The people of God experienced a fracturing now what moment. Now what do I do? You ever been there? A now what moment? I remember a few weeks back after my proposal was approved for my writing. Oh, I was excited. I was, I was, I was excited that all 312 pounds of me was levitating off the ground. Right. 
My, my, my sister that you guys met, she, she, uh, she uh, cashed out me $30 so I could go to Cheddar's and get something to eat. I was excited, right? So now I'm excited, and I eat all my food, and I ate this big old piece of cheesecake that I should not have eaten because after I ate it, I was drunk, right? And so then after all of that drama and all that good stuff, at a now what moment? I asked my wife, I said, you love me. Where are all the balloons and the cards and, the, and all this kind of stuff? I was waiting to go back home and maybe open the door and outrush balloons. And my children were going, great, daddy, we love you. Thank God you made it. Nothing. <laughs> Bear, I didn't even get a hug. <laughs> they didn't hug me. They said, great job, daddy. It was a now what moment. I even messed with myself. You guys even love me anymore? I was fishing then. I was desperate. I wanted my moment to continue to what? To grow and to be awesome, but that's not how life is. Sometimes we got to come down to the ground and just walk a mundane life. Wash the clothes, cut the grass, cut my hair, do this, change the all. <sighs> But there was one thing that the people back then did. Their action said that we must unite and push forward with one mind. One of the striking characteristics of the early church was that they were together with one accord. The word accord means to have one mind. These early disciples, all 120 of them, according to chapter 1, verse 415, were united in their desire to seek the face of the Lord. That's what we're here today doing. We are united today seeking the face of the Lord. Gay already told us how to get our insides clean. She not only had a bar of soap, but she even brought it home with a towel. So don't just get in there and use the soap and think you've done something. You've got to go to work and scrub that stuff. Unity was the calling card of the early church. You know what? I get excited when I see you. And you see me and you say stuff like you hugged me this morning. I like that kind of stuff. I do. I, I can't stand a hard church. There's two types of churches, and we'll move through. There's a dynamic church. Then there's a static church. The dynamic church is the church that no matter if there's a small band here, and a, a big band on, on, on virtual, that church is alive. They have a twinkle in their eyes. Yes, they're tired. They're running and they're setting up. And where do we put this? And where did this go? No, don't touch that. All this kind of stuff. But they still have this in their eye. And you have the static church. They don't say nothing to you. You don't say nothing to them. They sit in that one pew, that one seat. They park in that one spot. And if you sit in that pew or park in that spot, they're going to let you know, either verbally or non-verbally. That's a static church. That's not a united church. That's a divided church that is not going to last long. And it's hard to pastor, help me, Reverend Royster, it's hard to pastor a church like that. Because the book, <laughs> the book says, love your brother. So we're trying to love our brother and unite, but the people here are not doing that. And all of a sudden, this is what the church becomes. A fist fight for one hour. You know what I'd rather do than go fight people for an hour? I'd rather go to the mall and watch people. That's a scientific experiment. Maybe I can go fishing. Maybe I can call somebody. Who wants to be a part of a static church? The early church was what? They were not static. It says this, that they were, number one, united in purpose. The new body of believers waited on God together. We're waiting together, right? We're trying to find a space. We're trying to do this. They got together for the purpose of God and his church. The church should have a purpose. Why are we here? Helping, healing, and providing for those around us. This is a trait of the early church in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, it says, we are told to strive together 
This phrase means to work together as athletes. Now, when I was in high school, I was not a good athlete, but I looked good in my uniform. That's all that mattered. I got my hair cut, had a little fade, had my part. I was good, but I was a bad athlete. But I tried, and they knew that if they're going to give me the baton, we ain't going to win. We're not, but we're going to look good. <laughs> so in the church as a holy team, each one of us has a baton. So I'm running in my race with you, and I get tired, I hand you the baton. You start running. You give somebody else the baton, they start running, and the other person starts running. Everybody plays a part in the race as an athlete, and we get to the finish, how? We helped each other get there. How do we build open arms? Everyone does their part. They're united in purpose. First Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 12 through 26 says, I need you, I'm, I'm sorry, it says, <clears throat> I need you, you need me because I am a part of the body. It's letting us know that we're part of the body of each other. We should all have the same goal. Corinthians 10 31 says, whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God and of course not for self. It's easy. All we have to do is for the glory of who? God, right? And so when you're feeling some kind of way because you're tired, you're frustrated or whatever it is, then we take time and we let those thoughts pass, right? And then we say, okay, I'm ready to get in the game. Anybody ever, I know Barry, we've talked about it with you before, you run, right? And I like to lift weights. We had an awesome conversation. But there are some days, whew, I don't want to run. I want to. My brain, my brain does, but my body says not today. So it's at that time that I have to wait and rest so that I can connect and then I can start running. Every day is not going to be Sunday. You ever had them days? Amen. Yes, we have. <laughs> Every day is not, hey, how you doing? I love you. God bless you. It's not that. But it becomes that when we have other people there with us who are showing us. And then we also do this. We may have different ideas, but once the consensus is reached, once the covenant is understood, we should break out of our huddle and run together. And for those who can't run fast, somebody's with them, just walking and talking with them. It's going to be okay. Come on. And keep walking. For those who may not be as strong as the other one, then those who are strong will bear the infirmities of the weak and pick them up in this united front and we'll run on. And then this church, this body of believers, this community will become like an infection. I want to go down there. They actually are genuine people. They're loving people. You know, the other day they asked me how I was doing. The other day they shook my hand. The other day they told me they loved me. The other day they called me and said, we, didn't have, we, we haven't seen you in a while, but are you okay? But I know in this postmodern age, we don't do that a lot in the church because they don't want us to do that a lot these days. Don't call me. We text them. They were united in prayer. In verse number 14, they prayed together. They prayed with and for one another. Notice how they prayed to what? Together. When we are praying together, then hopefully we're not hating on one another. It's hard to pray for somebody that you don't like. Yeah. Love, I'm sorry. So we come together, you pray for me, I pray for you, genuinely, and nothing builds unity in the church anymore than carrying one another's burdens to the Lord in prayer. Then a bond would happen. This is how it happens. We talk to each other. That develops some trust. That develops some transparency. And then that develops some togetherness. But if we're not talking to each other, then we're never going to be together with one another. And then the church will never be its dynamic thing that the Christ left for us. When I talk to you, I learn about you. I learn that you like to run. You learn that I like to lift weights and do kung fu. Then we get in the car and driving back home, I look at my wife and I go, that guy's all right. That's what we did. <laughs> I feel an intimate setting. 
He's all right. We go to these people's house over here, we can't leave. And we get in the car and go, they're all right. But how did it start? It started with talking. Then it developed some trust where now I trust you and I start opening my heart just a little bit. Let you in. Boom. I open up a little bit more. Let you in. So then after a while, I can't see. I miss you. Then I say, we haven't talked to them in a while. Why? Because now my heart is full of you, starting by talking. I like this. This is what it ought to be. This is what it ought to be. Pray for me, don't hurt me. Pray for me and don't focus on my shortcomings. We all got them. If I, I could sit all day and, and, and just shoot at people in church if I wanted to. Too short, too this, too that, whatever, all day. What does that prove? That I'm not growing. <laughs> when we pray for others, we are less focused on ourselves and our problems, but on others. Then they were united in power. They were united in power because they were together. They were all filled with one mind of the Holy Spirit. The unity of the early church came about because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came when they were in line with God. You remember Peter? I always go back to Peter. Peter ran away naked when he denied that rooster got to crowing. And Jesus, his mind got to think, Jesus said, I was going to do this. <laughs> right? And so the rooster of God, I don't even, then they, they, they said, I don't even know the man. Takes out running, and then Peter comes in the book of Acts in the same place and begins to what? Stand up differently now and begins to preach, and 3,000 souls came to God that day. 3,000. Wait a minute. But this was the same Peter <laughs> that took out running, denying everything. Peter had a shift in his mentality that went away from running from God to lining up with God, and he got power after that, and that thing blew up and developed what we have today. When we line up with what God has for us, when we stand together united, even when we have disagreements, there's moral and non-moral agreements, disagreements. A moral disagreement would be, uh, those are the things we shouldn't disagree about, feeding someone, helping someone, all this kind of stuff, okay? But a non-moral thing is, what color is the paint? What color is the hymn book? <laughs> Amen. Preaching that connects. <laughs> what color is this and what color is that? That was a comedian a long time ago. His name was Mike Wernke. And he's preaching about this church and the church split, literally. The people, this is what, this was the video, this is a little tape long time ago. We had cassette tapes. And he said the church, a little country church, it split right down the middle. They actually cut the church in half because of the color of hymn books. One wanted something for something and the other wanted red for the blood of Jesus. And so they got into this non-moral fight that cut the church in half. Can I help you as long as I'm in this capacity? I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. If we have a tie, and I need to be the tiebreaker, don't ask me. Just say, you know what he's going to say? He don't care. And then I go to picking the red hymnals, and then you mad at me for two weeks. You like that side better. You like this side. I don't like either side. All I care about is the people that are coming to this church that need help. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's the only focus. <laughs> the people that are walking in the door that says, what do we have here? We heard this place called Open Arms, no matter who you are, where you are. Is it for real? Yes. 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 What color hymnals do you want? What color carpet do you want? Peter asked me, we should move this bench over here. I said, I don't care. 
We should, I don't care. I love you. I don't care. We should put this, I don't care. You're the man. You do it. I Just tell me what you want me to do. I really don't. That's why a long time ago, one of the members, and I'm almost done, one of the members of the church where I, in my home church, we had had a lot of things going on. And I'm walking out of the pulpit one day. I may have told this story before. If I have, forgive me. And it means a lot to me. That's why I tell them again. I'm walking out, and I'm a young, young associate minister then. And I'm going through the process. And I, and I walk, and I'm going around the church this way inside. You probably, it's a pretty big sized church. And I'm walking around, and she grabs my hand. Now, she's a, like the mother of the church. She grabs my hand, and she pulls me down, and she says, you're going to be a good pastor. I had no idea what she meant. And as I went along, I knew what she meant because she had dealt with a lot of pastors in her life who thought that because you have that title, that's your hammer to beat people on the head with it. I told her, I said, thank you very much. And there were times when I took on the title of servant leader versus this big old pee on my chest, and I am all the God. No, you're not. You're a servant leader. That's what you are. You're called to help, to serve, to guide, to sit, to cry, to mourn, to do all these things with the people that have placed trust in you and say, can you sit with me and pray for me? That's what it's all about. One mind. There's no way around it, and we're done. Vance Havner put it this way. He said, as we're talking about being united, he says, snowflakes are fragile things, but when they stick together, they can stop traffic. And a funny thing. One day, you all know about Lucy. Play something for me. You, you all know about the cartoon, The Peanuts, right? Yeah. One day, Lucy. You know, Lucy had this way about her. Lucy walks in and pull Linus. Linus is sitting there and he's, he's reared back. He's watching cartoons. He's enjoying himself. Because if you didn't know anything about cartoons, then you, you like them. You get your pot tart and a Coke and you get all amped up and you watch Mighty Mouse until your mama get home. So Linus is sitting there relaxed at the table. He's watching cartoons and in walks Lucy. Lucy with herself, she walks in and she says, give me that remote control, or no, no, turn the channel. Linus looks at her and says, well, uh, who, who gives you the authority to tell me to just turn the channel? She says, one, two, three, four, five. This gives me the authority to tell you to turn the channel. Linus gives her the remote control. She changes the channel. Bless his little heart. He looks at his hand. He says, how come y'all can't come together like that? <laughs> so the story is like this. We could probably do something like this. We could probably do some kung fu and scratch the eyes or slap the nose or something like that. But when we all start doing this, and we lock it like that with Christ. There is nothing we can't do. The reason so many churches fail is because they're walking around like this. But when Reverend Royster, Reverend Kruger, all of us, the stranger, the broken, come together. It's amazing. It's amazing. We can bust down doors. We can bust down walls. We can bust down financial concerns. We can bust down problems in the church. We can stop this and stop that if we put our hands and fingers together. I'll repeat this to the day I died. One of the bishops looked at us as we were getting ordained deacon. And he says, you may never be the world's best preacher. 
You may never fill an auditorium like a T.D. Jakes. You may never be a Jeremiah Wright. You may never be a Freddie Haynes or Marcus Cosby or whatever these names are that we see a lot of or I see a lot of. You may never do that. But don't be a sorry pastor. When they call you, go. When they need prayer, pray. When they're hungry, feed them. When they need something, give it. That's your call. And you be united with them to carry on what Christ gave you. To be a pastor, a servant is a privilege, not a right. You could have called anybody. You could have gave anybody a contract that you saw fit. But for some cosmic reason, you took a chance on me. Amen. You took a chance on somebody you had only known for, well, about a year, I guess. Saw my family. Saw my smile. Kenneth, the other day, I got your email about sending that thing off to let them know that I'm a member of this body, united with this body. Maybe I'm just getting older. Maybe I'm getting savvy. I don't know. But you didn't have to do that. You could have said you were going to do it. You didn't have to do it. And I emailed back, perfect. Thank you. So are we united? Or is it just in our name? <clears throat> Open arms, united. Church of Christ. Open arms, united Church of Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your example with the people that came after you, after your day. And as they struggled <clears throat> with all that was going on around them, dear Lord, they came together and united together. And in one mind, on one accord, they reshaped history. I pray for this growing body of in this community. We're not small. We're growing. But Lord, we understand that words have power. Bless each person here under the sound of my voice. Bless those who are watching this morning. May what we've said bless them before we sing again. Thank you, Lord. In the name of your son, we pray. We're going to be blessed with a song and then yet again. Peter, I want to uh, request that song again, that resurrection power. That one? No. Yeah, I know you're busy. I like that song. I'm going to take the freedom part. Stand.
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I think we did okay today. We are moving from spot to spot. We will be at David and Kenneth on next week. And uh, we will do what we did today. Fellowship one with the other. We will set up. I don't think we gave uh, Gail a, a hand of praise this morning. You got, we got to give it to you. Yeah. There you go. We are giving you your flowers before <laughs> somebody, that, that's fine. We're going to smother you. If you don't want to be smothered, don't come to open arms. <laughs> but we're going to thank you. So uh, I already thank you, David. I mean, Kenneth, for his, uh, they're blessing us for next week. And so that's another place I have to put in my phone again to find that place. <laughs> but anyway, we have, uh, before we do the benediction, Reverend, you want to say anything? Anybody want to have any closing remarks? Uh, no, no closing remarks. Barry and Gay, thank you for opening up your patio area to us again. Tent. We're having a good old open air Methodist tent preaching revival. How does a UCC have a revival? That was one of my questions in school here recently back when. Anyway, so. We love you guys, and uh, we thank you for, uh, for doing this one again. Once again, Peter and Vicki, thank you for that, trekking all that stuff in. Thank you to the, our young adult musicians this morning. <laughs> Peter got on, chimed right on in there. I know you've been wanting to play with them, and they were wanting to play with you, and that thing worked out this morning. I'm afraid what can happen when we get in a place and we actually practice. <laughs> The spirit going to be so high, I'm going to just get up and say, y'all have a good day. <laughs> and we'll go home. Raise the roof. Say, yeah. Amen. I can't wait, y'all. I'm serious. I like, I like coming together. Anyway, if that being said, I'm going to stop talking because that's what I do. As a preacher, I talk. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. We're on our way home. Father, we thank you for this time together. We ask for your protection over us as we leave this sacred space. And we leave your spirit here. So that on next week, on today, if any challenge is to come into this home, we know that your anointing will take it out the back door. So Lord, bless, bless Barry and Gay this morning, thanking them once again for their love, for their openness, for their sharing with us their sacred space. Bless all those who are watching us virtually this morning who are not with us. We pray for their health, their strength, their safety, their prosperity this morning. We pray for all of us, all of, all of us this morning. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we say together, amen, amen, and amen. I would say hug somebody before you go, but just chuck in the do sign because you know how we're talking about. <laughs> amen.